In this video, we're going to look at bowel obstruction. Let's first begin with the signs and symptoms and how a person can present. So the signs and symptoms of a bowel obstruction um, include nausea, vomiting, cramping, abdominal pain, obstipation, an inability to um, basically do a poo, diarrhea, possibly. Um, there can be a distended abdomen, fever, as well as tachycardia. So bowel obstruction, as the name suggests, is obstruction of the bowel. It can be of the small intestine or it can be of the large intestine. In this video, we're going to mainly focus on the small intestine, but um, it, it, it applies for the large as well. So let's first draw an obstructed bowel here. I'm going to draw a sphincter-like thing in red, just to um, represent the obstruction. And the obstruction can be, can be caused by many things, which we'll look at. But essentially, if you have an obstruction, um, the food that we eat will pile up, of course. And um, this can cause some serious problems because, you know, normally in the intestine, we actually find bacteria, um, commensal organisms that live within our intestine. And when the bacteria is exposed to all this uh, nutrition, it will begin to um, grow, essentially. But before looking at, you know, the pathophys, let's look at um, how, the, uh, how bowel obstruction can be categorized. And it can be categorized into a mechanical obstruction or a pseudo-obstruction. Let us first focus on mechanical obstruction. And there are five main types of mechanical obstruction. The first type um, of mechanical obstruction, the most common, is uh, what's known as an adhesion. And it's essentially where two, um, two parts of the bowel are basically are connected with each other by a sort of fibrous band. So this is referred to as an adhesion, and this can cause an obstruction. Uh, the other most common type of obstruction is where we have essentially a tumor, a cancer growth within the bowel itself and this can lead to an obstruction. Another type of mechanical obstruction is known as a intersusception. Intersusception is essentially when the, uh, the part of the bowel invaginates itself. So there's some termin terminology we have to know about intersusception. And the first one is the part of the bowel that goes into the other part of the bowel. This is known as the intussusceptum. And the part of the bowel that is on the outside, surrounding it, is now known as the intussusceptium. Another cause of a uh, mechanical obstruction, a type of mechanical obstruction, is a hernia. And a hernia is essentially a protrusion of the part of the intestine through the abdominal wall because of because the abdo abdominal wall can be weak, for example. And this can sort of strangulate the part of the, in uh, the, the intestine causing obstruction. Finally, the last type of mechanical obstruction is referred to, is known as a volvulus. And this is essentially where we get twisting of the bowel. So now let us look at each um, of these five types and sort of uh, describe it in a bit more detail. The most common cause of mechanical obstruction is post-operative adhesion. So this is essentially when you have a surgery of the, of the abdominal cavity and opening the abdominal cavity, um, it can cause um, fibrous ad adhesions to cause between segments of the bowel. So adhesions are fibrous bridges between bowel segments. Adhesions um, cause extrinsic compression of the bowel, which thus can lead to an obstruction. Now, the cancer. So, colorectal cancer um, is a common and lethal uh, disease. And risk factors for um, cancer of the bowel include age, family, obesity, um, inflammatory bowel disease, and certain diets. So, this is self-explanatory. A tumor can grow so large that it can cause an obstruction. Now, intersusception. 
Intussusception is rare in adults. Between about 1 to 5% of mechanical bowel obstruction is a result of intussusception. Common site of intussusception is the ileocecal valve. So this is essentially when the, um, the, the, the valve, the ileocecal valve, just basically goes, invaginates into the cecum, resulting in an intussusception. The next type of mechanical obstruction is hernia, which is defined as a protrusion, bulge, or projection of an organ or a part of an organ through the body wall that normally contains it. Hernias um, can be internal or external. So in the diagram above, we have an example of a hernia that is bulging out, the intestine that is bulging out of the abdominal cavity, which is the wall that normally contains it. The last type of mechanical obstruction we'll talk about is the volvulus, which is twisting of the segment of the intestine around a fixed point. Common sites of a volvulus include the cecum and sigmoid area of the colon. Um, a small bowel um, adhesion, adhesion of the small bowel can lead to a volvulus. So those are examples of mechanical obstruction. Adhesions, cancer, intersusception, hernia, and volvulus. Now let's look at pseudo-obstruction. Pseudo-obstruction, as the name implies, is pseudo, false obstruction, false obstruction. But regardless, it does result in an obstruction of the bowel. So the main examples we look at are myopathy, problems with the muscle, and neuropathy, uh, problems with the innervation of the bowel. And then we'll look at a specific type of condition known as Hirschsprung disease. Hirschsprung disease affects the distal part of the colon. So a myopathy, problem with the muscles, results in no movement, no peristaltic contractions. And thus, um, this can lead to an obstruction because the food just doesn't go through. A neuropathy, problems with the uh, nerve innervation of the uh, bowel means that we can have no innervation of the smooth muscles, which means we, we have abnormal movement, so we get an obstruction. Finally, Hirschsprung disease is a congenital condition, uh, so it, it's present in, in the baby. And this is where we have nerves that are missing at the distal end of the colon, which means that we have no to no or abnormal um, peristaltic contractions, so movement. And this can mean that um, we, we can have a obstruction. A surgery can correct this. So regardless of the cause, um, you know, pseudo-obstruction or mechanical obstruction, it results in obstruction. And an obstruction means that uh, the material, the substance that we eat, cannot pass through our bowels smoothly. It accumulates in the area. And this can result in a few things. So let's just go back to the diagram here and look at what, what it can cause. So food that pile ups here can be um, metabolized by the bacteria that are normally residing in the area to produce gas. Gas accumulates, causing, a bowel, causing bowel distension. Bowel distension, you know, it can compress the vessels that supply the bowel, so we can have venous compression. When we have venous compression, this means that we have decrease in oxygen supply to the area, to the bowel, and thus we have decrease in oxygenation. Decrease in oxygenation results in a few things. Firstly, because we have no oxygen supply to the bowel, the cells of the intestine die. Second, no oxygen supply decreases peristalsis, further aggravating the bowel distension. So essentially we have more distension. Decrease in oxygenation also promotes the bacteria in the area to enter circulation because they're anaerobic, they can enter circulation. So when the bacteria enter the circulation and when we have uh, the intestinal cells dying, all this essentially are toxic and they, all these, these, are, these are toxins that can enter the circulation resulting in some form of sepsis, septic reaction. So that was one aspect of, of it. Further, when we breathe, air goes down you know, our intestine. It's normal. But this realistically aggravates the bowel distension. It promotes the distension of the bowel. So again, we have you know, bowel distension and 
this compresses the vessels, we get venous compression. And when we have venous compression, which we haven't looked at, it can actually result in fluid being secreted because of all the um, fluid piling up in this area, it just gets secreted out into the bowel. When fluid is being secreted into the bowel, we lose water. And when we lose water, we lose electrolytes. And when we lose electrolytes and water, this results in hypotension. So we actually get shock. So bowel distension simply results in hypotension. Also, when we get um, distension of the bowel, this sort of uh, triggers some nerves in the bowel, which sends signals up to the brain um, to trigger the vomiting response. Because the brain thinks that there's something wrong in this area and it wants to get rid of it. So vomiting is triggered. But vomiting doesn't really help the, the, the scenario because when we vomit, we lose water and we also lose electrolytes, which results in hypotension again. So we get shock, hypovolemic shock. So shock can result from hypotension or shock can result from sepsis, which is um, when we get you know, the bacteria entering the circulation. So I hope that all made sense. But the complications of bowel obstruction can be three main things. One, bowel ischemia, which we just uh, means that we have decreased supply of oxygen to the bowel. Two, perforation. If the bowel is distended for you know, so much, it can perforate. Three, sepsis, when the toxins of the bacteria enter circulation due to the necrosis of the area, etc. Ne uh, necrosis of tissue of the area. So, again, um, when we have venous compression, I mean, this means that a healthy liver uh, doesn't get a blood supply to it, and, th and thus it dies. And when it dies, this releases toxins to circulation. It also allows the bacteria to move from the bowel into circulation. Number two, the complication, perforation. So here we have the lumen of the bowel. If, it, if the bowel grows, distends due to the gas buildup in the air and whatnot, it essentially perforates releasing gut content into the peritoneum. This can cause peritonitis, causing a massive problem. Next, sepsis. Sepsis is due, can be due to the perforation and due to the systemic dissemination due to the death, the, the dying cells in the area. So that was a sort of an overview of uh, bowel obstruction, the different types of bowel obstruction, which is mechanical and pseudo obstruction as well as we looked at the pathophysiology and the complications associated with bowel obstruction. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.